So uh, we'll do about 20 minutes. Um, and yeah, this is Dylan. I'm Pat. Hi. Hi, Dylan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you, Laura. Nice to meet you, Pat. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Finally see the boys behind the voices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super impressive. Did Kalen leave the air conditioner on all night? I don't know. I'm going to kill him. It's like a fucking meat freezer. We're in a meat freezer right now. The other knucklehead that uses the studio left the air conditioning on all night. Sorry. I mean, he should pay for the utilities. He's going to. I'm sending him a fucking. All right, we're ready. Sending the boat. <laughs> Good. Uh, joining us today is a sea red that we have come to just adore. Uh, she is the kissing bandit. She is the raider of tombs. She is none other than Laura Dupree. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. It's nice to be here. You know, Dylan, I actually we throw that word sea rat around quite a bit on this. I don't show. think it applies. To I Laura. don't think it applies to Laura. No. I don't no. think it applies to you. Um, nope. We have to be consistent with the branding, but I what driving over here, I was thinking about that philosophically. If Laura is of that species, and I just don't think she is. No, she's a different. No, I'm a different, I'm a different species. You gotta come up with a name for me yourself. <laughs> well, we Not come up with a, we're just you're you're a Tomb Raider, Laura. We can also call you Laura, but um, we have we start every interview off with. The same question, mm. usually. This is not by me. A, a barnacle wanted to ask this question. Yeah, and the question is, what was it like diving in piles of cow shit as a child? <laughs> um, It was absolutely amazing. I mean, yeah. I don't know why people were so shocked about it. It's yeah. kind of normal where I grew up. I mean, we we're young. I didn't do it alone, so it wasn't weird you know, doing this fucking thing alone. But I was yeah. with all my, like, cousins and whatever, right. bringing the cattle to the stable, and then there's obviously shit around, and we, like, it's our job to squeegee the shit together, like, get them out, get it out of the way. Basically, yeah. what you do on deck, squeegee the teak, so we'd squeegee the shit around. Sure. But then also, it's like a mud bath, so you right. can just... You know, it's enjoyable. Your, I don't did know. Did your parents did your parents get pissed off at you? Like, oh God, you smell like cow shit again. No, they encouraged it. Good. Here's the thing. She probably this is why Laura is so tough, right? She yeah. built up all her uh, you know, fighting off like I bet you could never get sick because you were wrestling around in cow doo doo all day. Yeah. I don't get sick at all. Dylan, exactly. And also, Dylan, there's worse childhood pastimes. Me and my friends, we used to throw rocks at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's horrible. That's sadistic. Something that I was enjoyable, more like a mud bath massage. I mean, throwing yeah, rocks at I, I used to tell my mother to <laughs> schedule play dates for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let the real question that we always start with, and this is from Dave Hart, a listener, a barnacle. How'd you get on the show? Um, basically, I was just approached online on Instagram. Um, but I've always wanted to do the show. Like I started when I started yachting a few years ago, I was, I watched below deck and I was like, fuck, I feel like I should do something like this because the world should see this personality and they should hear my voice. They should hear me sing, you know, all of that, all of the above. And also I just felt like I'm not going to make a shit out of myself because I know my job. I love what I'm doing and I'm just going to, you know, be myself. If someone enjoys that, you know, that's amazing. If you don't enjoy me, then the, Dill, this know. she's not a sea rat. She thought about what she was doing. Well, and it's also <laughs> so encouraging that she was like, I, I think people need to enjoy me because <laughs> it, it, it is a good amount of self-confidence that's, you know, merited um, because often that is coupled with delusional thinking. And we'll talk about him a lot, I think, or maybe just a little, but we'll talk about him a little, but I'm sure Kyle thinks the same exact way about himself, but I just don't, I think the scales are a little bit uh, tipped. Should we start off with a softball with yeah. a listener question? Okay. This is a softball. We're going to sprinkle in. We're going to talk about the kissing and all that stuff, but here's a softball. My oh, God. Marla Tanano <laughs> wants to know how awful is Kyle in reality? Oh, wow. No, I really enjoyed the guy. Like, to be honest, I, 
laughed my fucking ass off. He was the only one that I could speak my language to, my home language, as you can hear that. I do struggle sometimes with English. So it was nice to sometimes just speak to him in my language. And we got along really well. I know there's sides to him, you know, that's a bit questionable by people. You know, you guys don't see the whole picture. But I really enjoyed the guy. Obviously, there's some things that's questionable, but he's a really nice human being towards me. I don't have any bad bloods towards him. With with that, with that, Lara, having seen the show. See, so I get it. You're actually doing work all day. And you're in a different department, yeah. you know, and the, exactly, deck crew, yeah. the deck crew is not trafficking in deceit and, and yeah, yeah, exactly. you guys are just, you know, we're we're just, we're just, yeah, we're just enjoying it and are doing our jobs, right. you know, obviously. So, but. so has your perception of some of the interior changed given that you now that you're watching it back, all the things that you didn't see while you were busy working, has your perception changed about any of the people you worked with? Um, my perception has not changed. The thing is like, I don't really, you know, I know them for who they were when I met them. Like seeing the show is not going to change my perspective about anyone because I was there first and seeing how they really are. Obviously, like some things I didn't see, like how the fighting and whatever. And sometimes I was unconsciously drunk, so I couldn't understand what they were fighting about Yeah. or you know, when they fight in the interior and we're working, I didn't know because I'm not going to get involved. You know, I do sometimes like to stir the pot, but that's just, I was bored. I had to. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, so my perception definitely did not change. I still love each and every crew member I worked with, honestly, yeah. to God. But yeah, seeing it back and seeing how it was actually a fucking shit show in there, that obviously made me be like, oh, but I'm not going to choose sides. I don't want to. Sure. You know, uh, yeah, Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're gonna sprinkle on some fun questions. Some of the, gr- I mean, some of the great moments of the season have been you shit faced eating. Um, yeah. What are what are your go to foods when you're oh. fucked up? I love eating anything with meat <laughs> in don't give me a fucking vegan sandwich or whatever right. i'm not yeah. going to eat it like i want meat obviously yeah. like 80 percent protein and then whatever else is left i'll eat obviously i love noodles and pasta right. a lot as you can see right but like go to meal when i'm pissed would definitely be like a kebab or a okay. pizza or a burger the pops are so big hmm. everywhere but the united states we don't have kebab yes. culture hmm. And what's bunny chow? Is that a drunk food? <gasps> bunny chow is amazing. A bunny chow or a Gatsby. A bunny chow, I think, is like a big bun filled with yeah. like minced meat. Yeah. And it's amazing. And a Gatsby is like filled with slap chips. Or you don't know what slap chips is. It's fries. Is that fries covered in gravy. Ooh, yeah, fries and gravy and meat and just it, it's like <laughs> it's very big. I shouldn't, yeah, it's really big and it's really enjoyable. <laughs> uh, listener Louis Benedict wants to know what was the transition like? Um, absolutely hating Frenchman, the Frenchman, to loving him, and what made you love him? Great cue. The thing is, I never, I never hated him. The thing for me is, we're on the job. The first priority for me is let's do the job properly. You know, safety, everything is first. You know, fuck having fun obviously have fun that's where i bring my personality in, but work comes first this guy did not want to work he came on there for obviously other reasons so i was a bit like what are you actually doing here you telling me that you've been a bosun and all these things like i was pissed off from the beginning because he was speaking very highly of himself and at that time in the beginning he was making me feel a bit low especially when i got lead deck and like i did not feel like he's going to listen to me at all so that's where it was like touchy feely but then i saw the true max he's actually so harmless he doesn't have a bad bone he's just a strange weird funny guy like he's so just weird but he it's is just nonsense Extremely, i mean he's not, so... absolute nonsense it's, i don't know what's in there but yeah. laura how much of it is, is a shtick how much of it do you think is that i don't think any of it is a shtick i think he's like he's a poorly wo- or a differently wound up toy i mean it's just completely different 
What did you, you had, say there? You had, you had mentioned that you felt like initially you felt he'd come on for other reasons. Um, I'm trying to lure yeah. you talking shit about him. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what were those other reasons that you thought he was here? And, and do you think the persona that he is, is that we saw is actually him or is it more put on? Oh, I 100% think Max is himself. Like I've seen him after the show. And he was exactly the same, talking absolute fucking nonsense that no one understands. Yeah. But also, it's it's funny, you know. It's, you can can't hate the guy. Of course, he says weird shit and he does stupid stuff, and he yeah. does not listen to me. But still, like he's harmless. He's not gonna yeah. be. He's, he's not a bad guy. He's not a bad person. Sure. You can't hate sure. the guy because he's just lazy or whatever. But he did not. I my initial thought thought why he came on the show was to obviously gain you know be famous or whatever for reason people do the show so i was like oh he's not going to be here to work you know we need someone that wants to work and he did bring his weight at the end of the day sometimes so luke uh are you drinking a negroni mm -mm. rosé oh, and sick. a tumbler rosé and a tumbler this is this is classy as fuck, pristine. I, I think it is too. It looks classy as fuck. Um, exactly. Okay, so Luca, we need to talk about Luca. Um, yes. uh, he was the uh, the bosun that could. Uh, he was thrust into the position because I think you guys had like a drug trafficker who was the first. Um, <laughs> bosun. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, fuck. He should be locked up, that guy. <laughs> um, so I I guess like, okay, before we get to Luca, what the fuck was going on with that guy? Do you have any idea what was about Rue? Rue, yeah. Or Rua, yeah, I, no. I, from like, honestly, from the get go, as I stepped on board and I met the guy, I had such a weird feeling about him. Yeah. Like, honestly, something was just off. And then everything. It's just, there was just weird, like, obviously the fake license, the fake yacht yeah. master. You cannot come back to that. That's fake. That's frauded, 100%. Yeah. And also, you know, his friend that passed away, I feel very sorry for that. Sometimes I just, it's just difficult to believe the guy, honestly, yeah, because totally. it's, yeah, you're we, a fraud. And after we, the show, they, there was a few stories that came out about him that got into situations where he, where, you know, fraud. Hard. Yeah. So it's yeah. just what it is. He was allegedly, 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 he was sending massive amounts of weapons in shipping containers across the Atlantic. Um, but exactly. Really quickly, the, <laughs> yeah, I, we felt like shit questioning the whole best friend story, but it, it was you just don't know because the guy has another human being on his license and he's scratching his head like it's going to work. But Luca, yeah. um, stepped into the role. And did a pretty good job. You guys were um, really tight the entire season. There was no drama. Yeah. You seemed to be getting your work done. Um, how was he as a bosun? And what do you think of his pearl necklace? I loved Luca as a bosun. Like, as I said, I've been in the industry for, you know, about four years. And I've never worked with a bosun like that. All that he's never been a bosun before. But just the way we work together, like he could not even say anything, and I just know what he's thinking and what needs to be done. Yeah. Like it was such a cool dynamic. He was such a not a too laid back, but he was just calm in the way he was speaking to me. And I've never mm -hmm. experienced that before. Yeah. Just how he would lead and how he would he trusted me, and it was so such a nice experience for me. Obviously, wanting to step up and feeling that someone's trusting me with basically everything it was so good so working with him was amazing what a great bosun his pearl necklace obviously fucking love it i think it's a <laughs> it's a chick magnet 100 yeah. percent. i mean look at the guy <laughs> yeah can i ask, uh loose uh lazy loosender hey lazy loosender who was the best kisser on the crew or if you'd like to go back from episode five uh who are the top nine kissers from that night you can just give us a rundown <laughs> yeah that was so fucking good. That was Ripley's, believe it or not. I mean, that we, was were, good. we were that up was on good. our feet. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's. It, it, I feel like I, I have to pat myself on the back for that one. Yeah. yeah. 
Bri- uh, hey, Pat. Yeah. Brief uh, respite from this uh, amazing, I don't even want to say that. It's just a break. It's just a, a break that we don't want to take. But mm-hmm. we do want to take, we're, we're, look, Lara's really fun to talk about, so I want to keep talking to her. But mm-hmm. I also am overjoyed to tell the audience about the meta. I'm, I'm jammed up right now. Mm. The benefits of microdose. You know, you could use a little microdose right now. Absolutely. You know why? Because you drank too much coffee? Drank too much coffee. Microdose helps with stress management. It helps with creativity. Pat, how have you been incorporating it into your life? Well, it helps me sleep. I got a crying four-month-old. He keeps me up all night. Well, he doesn't keep me up. He keeps my wife up because she's not using microdose. But you know who is? Yeah. Me. I sleep through the night like a baby. You're sleeping like the ironic baby that doesn't sleep through the night. Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code BADTV to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description. But again, that's microdose.com and code BADTV. TV. Um, did you that night when you kissed all those beautiful ladies? Did were you? It seemed like you kind of there. There it was. Na- you naturally progressed through like two or three, and then we got the vibe that you were like, okay, I'm on a fucking mission now. I'm gonna get the entire boat. Um, were you just what was going on that night? I didn't even come with a mindset of something like that happening. Yeah. Obviously, like you guys see nine, but it wasn't nine different people. It was four or five different people, but obviously different times. Oh, okay. I don't know how it got to that. It was just, it just happened. I saw Luca and Jace, I think, and I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to have to take my shot. I mean, here we are. This is a massive experience. No one else is doing anything. I mean, all the boys on board aren't doing anything. So. Yeah. Right. I might as well just do what I can and I got it done, brother. I got it done. (laughs) Um, I got a couple more listener questions. Okay. So um were you annoyed when Captain Sandy prompted the guests uh to use the water toys? Um that's first part question. And the second one, how much of a pain in the ass is that slide? Um, I wasn't annoyed, but obviously it's just like Like one day that we don't have to put everything in because it's like it's anchor get everything in ASAP Rocky. There's no waiting around, and the slide is a bitch. Like to be honest, when we started off, we did not know. Like if you go on a boat, there's usually a procedure how to launch the slide. No one knew how to launch it. Me and Luca had to sit there and be like, okay, how are we gonna do this? Ugh. First time took about two hours, but the second, third, like obviously twenty minutes, it was a pain, obviously, but. It's not that bad. I've had worse before. That is my least favorite kind of puzzle. Yeah. A physical puzzle where you got to, you they know, could kill you. like you... a construction site or something. But... Like you're just like, how the fuck are we going to do this? Also, the slide's not fun. You go down it once and it's like, woo, what the hell? Ha- it's just, it's yeah. Just do a people big hype. repeat that or do they just hit no, it, it time? It's once and then you go down like, <laughs> oh, that was cool. Let's do something else. Mm. it's stupid <laughs> Meredith Laraway asks and this is probably a production question so if it doesn't go with uh, Bravo PR we'll eliminate it um, someone caught that there's a sign in the area where you guys eat called cell phone free zone can you explain mm-hmm. that, that poster is that something you guys put up no I think that's from previous crew from the previous boat I no one put that up that yeah. I know of we always we never to, even spoke about that we always try to catch Um, you know, because below deck, I think one of the reasons why it's so popular and people love it so much is because it's, it's the least canned reality show. Um, yeah, yeah. And we always try to real some kind of Svengali string pulling, but it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to be there. (laughs) You know? All right. I feel like I'm digressing for a second, but I forgot this question. Rachel Griffith wants to know, and by the way, I'm a kissing bandit too, or I was before I was married. What's your record <laughs> for kissing people in a day? How many in, in a single day? I can't, I can't say this. <laughs> <laughs> you can pass, just pass. Yeah, I'll, it's above, you know, it's above 
it's above a very high <laughs> number. But that was like the younger days, you know, when you're just like, let's see what I can get yeah. done. Mm. <laughs> okay. What's your worst charter as far as having guests on a boat? It, it, not necessarily on the show Below Deck, but just in the four years you've been in the industry. Do you have like a horror story from from the industry? Yes, 100%. I, well, actually very recently we had a three week charter. So it's a, not a three day charter. How much does three that week cost? Charter for the boat I was on, it's 600,000 per week. Um. Sometimes that was three. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was a, it was this people from LA and they were really rich and bougie and they brought the most amount of, pots on board and it was just a shit show because we cannot have stuff like that on board at all yeah there was a juggle with that to get that stuff off the boat before we had to go into charter and then the primary he wanted 15 pillows in his room 15 pillows we had to give our crew pillows because we did not have enough pillows he shat on the floor the one guy pissed in a cup while he was sleeping you know he doesn't even go to the toilet you will piss in a bottle close the bottle put it next to his bed that's fine for him. You know, shit like that. I don't understand how people are so inhumane. They don't like flush the toilet. It's just, it's disgusting how these people live. Yeah. You know? well, money can make you uh, inhuman, you know? Exactly. But imagine a three week trip with that. I, I, like doing I, 14 hours a day for three weeks straight. Like it's. Did you, insane. did you lose your faith in humanity being, <laughs> being around them? <laughs> I did lose my faith in people. It's just, it's a different kind of breed. Yeah. Like yeah. you, these rich people and then there's new rich that's new sure. to money. And then they think like, fucking hell, let's go. Let's just fuck everything up. Yeah. Where, where did we lose our minds? Yeah. Where did we go wrong here? <laughs> old rich. They're, they're kind of boring. You know, they're, they're just, yeah. they're, they're not all over the place like that. And they do think less of all of us, but it's a little bit yeah. underneath, you know, it's not They're respectful. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. They, they, you know, they're too high above to actually go that low, like yeah. the new rich, like, you right. know, fucking gang, whatever. They would you never know what shit I mean. on the floor. Um, our yeah, exactly. <laughs> our Facebook monitor, uh, Chief Stewart. Hey, Chief uh, Stu. Hey, Chief Stu. He wants to know, what do you still want to be a captain? And what is your timeline for that? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I'm actually now busy with my uh, instructors course, which is a jet ski instructors course. Next week I'll be doing another course for my um, experience on board. I definitely want to be a captain for that. I don't. I'm not going to put a timeline on it because I'm still young and I'm very much enjoying my life. I'm not going to be on it like this. I'm going to be living my life, but also work on my career i'm also working on becoming a dj so i've got decks and everything so i'm spinning those decks a bit so i've got a few things going on but captain is my main priority with a monkey on my shoulder i'll be there in about 15 years i reckon yeah. less than that hopefully but like a competent good captain like captain sandy like i would love to be there in the next 15 years is being a captain boring because i was thinking like i would i i would love if you were the captain on below deck but then you couldn't do your thing i mean you couldn't sip rose out of tumblers like is it is it a boring position you just have to be a little bit more locked down i feel like the 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 most uh, difficult thing for a captain is managing the crew. I don't think it's at all driving the boat or anything. It's literally managing your crew. Yeah. Imagine having all of these sea rats, like you guys would call it, underneath yeah. you as a captain and actually fucking managing them because they go out of control completely sometimes. <laughs> I know. You know? We've seen it. All right. So yeah, exactly. Ali Harms asked this question. As captain, now you're yeah. high who would you hire from your season to work under you? Love that question. That's such a great question. That's a, yeah, that's, uh, that's a and it's another question. question to lure you into talking shit. So give it to I me. know. I know. I don't want to. Don't say all of them because um, you're lying. No, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lie. So I never say Luca, I'll hire him as my engineer, not as my bosun. But. Yeah, because he loves the engineering part. We need an engineer on board. And I will hire Haley. 
I Wait, really enjoyed I her stop, work. Can I stop you but really quick? But she hates anteaters. Yeah, actually, can, can I stop you really quick? <laughs> Are engineers, is Luca not too pretty to be an engineer? Because they're kind of like, they're like motor witches. No. You know, they, they exist underneath the bowels of the boat, you know, like. Is... Yeah, no, I know what you, but honestly, in the yachting industry, engineers are very good looking, actually, like what I've seen. Okay. And everyone likes the engineer because they're smart. They can fix things. They're not right. on deck slaving away or interior. Like they're engineers. They're cool. Okay. You know? okay. So, That's perfect for Luca. Okay. So continue. hundred yeah, percent. So I'll definitely hire Luca Haley definitely as a deck guy, although she would not want to be on board a super yacht. <laughs> she loves her tugs. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jack. I yeah. would definitely put Jack on my boat, 100%. Yeah. Max, I'll put there for entertainment or I'll hire him for an entertainment purpose. Not yeah. as a decan on board. Right. Interior. It's going to be a difficult one. Lily. Natalia. <laughs> not Lily. <laughs> oh, no, I love Lily, but I would not ever, ever trust her on board my boat. I'm sorry. <laughs> she doesn't love know you, girl, but laundry. no. No, she doesn't. She knows she does not know how to drink either. She doesn't know how to drink like a syrup. That's right. <laughs> we talked about it last time. You, you, uh, you have to be able to drink and work. Mm. I mean, it's just part of the. It's part of the game. Hundred percent. You can't. Get it's hundred percent like down. that. Mm. Because we do it uh, off below deck as well. It happens. We will go out during the week. It absolutely shit face. Come back at seven a.m have to work at 8 a.m. again, but you go, you grow. Yeah. That's the industry. Um, I apologize only because of the kissing questions. I feel like we're piling on here, but Casis asks Mary F. Kill, Natalia, Jessica, Lily. Natalia, Jessica, Lily. Okay. Uh, okay. Mary, Jace, F. Natalia and kill Lily. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the that's right. The that's the, that's that, is that okay? <laughs> yeah. That, that <laughs> wasn't that wasn't a subjective question. That was there was a correct answer. Uh <laughs> we got along. Yeah. Um do we have a couple more for her or can we let, let her go to her Thursday evening? Well, I think it's uh I think she kind of summed up what we have to look forward to with Laura's adventure in life with uh some yay, DJing, yay. getting her captive's license. Anything else uh I guess what would you like to promote anything? What do you got going on? Um, well, yeah, I'm actually in a very happy relationship right now. We've actually yeah. been doing this. Yeah, well, we've been on and off for the last four years, but I mean, I'm definitely gonna marry this girl. I fucking love her. Oh. She's here right now. But yeah, I'm so happy and going back to Florida in about a month with her and I'll get back on my boat. She'll get a job, but I'll definitely wanna continue. With my path forward as a captain and with my uh, first hand support as my girl, I fucking love her. And yeah, that's, that's my, beautiful. Congrats. That's I have my story you. right now. Laura, I have to tell you, we've watched the show for five years and, you know, we get a lot of feedback from our listeners. And of course, we're in all the social media groups. And I have not seen someone get this much positive reaction on this show. Really? And, and can really? I piggyback off of that? Um, bravo, if you're smart. Laura, uh, and can we just clear this up? I, I don't know if it's a South African thing. I don't know. I, I we've said it so many yeah. different things. Can you just say it how it's supposed to be said? Laura, La, Laura, uh, La, because I say it in, in an Afrikaans accent. Yeah. I will say Laura, Laura, but it's Lara, Lara. Lara. Like, you got to smile when you say it. I say yeah. this all the time. Just smile when you say it. It does. It does <laughs> perk up a grin when you say it. Well, yeah. You have been such a bright light in what has been pretty uh, a pretty toxic season. Um, yeah. We call you the MVP of the season, and we really, really mean it. You've been absolutely incredible and a joy to watch. And I think going forward, Med has a dynamic duo in you and Luca. And I think that you guys just need to be on the show for seasons to come. So thank you so yeah. much for, for being yeah. just a wonderful person all season. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Like, Laura, honestly, give out that. nice to get nice oh, feedback. Sorry. Laura, sorry? Give out that, uh, Lada, give, give out that Instagram handle so you can uh, get your DJ work going. 
Yes, I already have a DJ name. I'm on SoundCloud right now. Put a put a song out there already. Um, but it's up and coming. You know, it's 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 rough music. It's not your just EDM. It's quite dark and deep. But that's how I like it. Where can people find it? <laughs> um, on SoundCloud, I'll put Psychic. Well, the name of my my DJ name one day will be Psychedelic. It's English mixed with Afrikaans. It's kind of sigh. I don't know how to explain it, but I'll put that. it out there for people Dude. to see, but they should go listen to my music. I'm up and coming. It's going to be really good. Laura having a residency in Miami. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it, you know, it should just tear the place up. Um, Thank you so much 100%. for joining us. We really appreciate you. We love you. Um, And yeah, have a good rest of the holiday season. Happy holidays. Thank you so, so much, guys. I appreciate it. It was nice chatting with you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.